add some errands to run and I just couldn't come back in time. All right. And I appreciate Mr. Green, um, you know, um, mentioning the fact that, boy, you know, volunteerism, you know, is, is, is free labor, but it's free labor. You, have to, yeah, you have to give back some time, you know. We have to do it. We have to you do have it. To back one. Yeah, you have know. To give back. All right. Okay. So um, let's start off with something really quick. I want everybody to try number one, part one and part two quickly. It's a little fraction. If you hear any noise in the background, it's my children, right? Sometimes it can be a bit noisy. Or just being kids. So we're just going to look at a few past papers today. Paper two. If this is my phone, right? All right, so anybody who's finished can can volunteer to go ahead. No, there are, there are different approaches to doing fractions, you know. So, just interesting to hear what your your um, your approach is. Are you guys hearing me? I'm just just checking. Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> I was just... All right. 
wait. All right, guys. Um, anybody want to volunteer for part one? Would appreciate it. So, should I just say the answer? Well, I wouldn't mind if you just walk me through what you did. But you can't tell me what you get. Okay, so I got. Two over three. All right, so you got two over three. All right, you're gonna you're gonna just tell me the answer. Are right. you you wanna walk me through? No. All right. Anybody's got two or three? Sorry. All right. Okay. I guess you probably want me to elaborate on it first because, you know. All right. So what, what I normally do is to convert all these mixed fractions to improper fractions. All right. So 2 times 4 is 8. 8 plus 1 is 9. All right. So there's actually 9, 9 over 4 plus 1 times 8 is 8, 8 plus 1 is 9, so that's 9 over what, 8, all over 9 over 2, so much 9, what I get at, so 4, 2 is 8, plus 1 is 9, all right, well, what I'm going to do now is to work on the top piece, all right, now when you add in Listen carefully. When you when you add in and subtract in fractions, we find the LCM. So when we're multiplying and dividing, we don't find the LCM. All right. So I'm a bit tax for space here. I'm just gonna squeeze it up right here. I'm trying to remember if if there's an erase on this thing here, but I, I doubt it. So nine plus four. Over what? Nine, nine over eight. All right. Can somebody tell me what LCM is? What's LCM of four and eight? Eight, sir. Eight, sir. Eight. Right, eight. So, and how many groups of four can you get out of eight? Two. Two nines. Eighteen. All right. And and eight into eight is just one. One nines is nine. All right. And what are following so far? Any questions? Yes, sir. All right. Good. So, what's eighteen plus nine? Twenty-seven. It's twenty-seven. So it's twenty-seven over eight. All right. So the top piece here. Is 27 over 8. All right, so it turns out that this thing will have an eraser. So, so, so actually, all right, you see this bar here? This bar, that big bar there is, means the what? The divide. All right, so it's going to be 27 over 8 
divided divided by 9 over 2. Now, let me just mention something to you. That the answer you get for the, the, the top piece always stays to the left. If you, if you interchange them, you're going to get the wrong answer. All right? Okay, so let me see if I can do a little um, trick here to get the to get out that. All right, so we're actually dividing what? 27 over 8 and 9 over 2. And I also mentioned that the answer for the, the top piece stays to the what? The left. If you have it any other way, you, you go and get it wrong. All right. So, all right. So this 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 program it doesn't have an eraser. So sorry about that. All right. So then no. So how do we divide fractions, class? What do we do? Anybody can tell me. So yeah, um, cross multiply, so. All right, but before you do that, what, what do I do with the division sign? You change the sign. Mm -hmm. Right. Change and what the sign I... and then you, then you flip the, the fraction over on the right. Right, right. What's another word for flip? Reciprocate. Right. Re resuscitate? Resuscitate. Or... <laughs> All right. Okay. Inverse. Right. Or you find the inverse. Right. Cool. All right. Then no. We how do we multiply fractions? Do I find the LCM? No. We just cancel. All right. As you can see, we can see we can see that two and eight can cancel. So two into two goes one. No, sir. Two. Hmm? Come again. You saying something? All right, I think I hear I heard somebody said no, sir. All right, so two into two goes one, two into eight goes what? Four. Um, what about nine and twenty-seven? Can those cancel? Yes, sir. Yes. So nine to nine goes one, nine into seven, twenty-seven goes what? Three. All right. So the answer is actually so when you finish now, what do you realize? When nothing else can cancel, you multiply across. So three times one will give you three. And four times one will give you what? Four. four. So the answer is actually what? Three quarters. All right. So unfortunately, the two or third is incorrect. Sir. Yes. Um, when you get the twenty-seven over eight, why didn't you simplify? To what? When you get when you got the um twenty seven over eight. When when why you didn't simplify, you simplify? When is a simplify? You mean like break it down? Or or convert yes, it to a mixed fraction? Or or convert it to a mixed fraction? No, like it's simplest form. All right. Um can somebody can somebody tell her why we can't break it down? Why I can't break this down, class? Is it's it because you can, you can simplify an improper fraction? Mm, no, is no, no. Um, sir, you can um eight can go to twenty seven without leaving a remainder. Exactly, there are no factors. There are no factors for eight and twenty seven. All right, miss. Likewise, the two and the nine, there are no, you can't. There's no factors. All right, miss? So you, there are no factors, well, except for apart from one, you know, but eight and 27 cannot be. What number are you thinking about to cancel them? Sir, you just to say, um, I was thinking of 24 and eight. Oh, but, okay, okay, no problem. But it's actually 27, all right? All right, cool. Are we are we are we good? All right. Oh dear. Um, um 
Okay, there's no eraser, but there's a undo button, so I'm just gonna do that. All right, let's look at part two. All right, I'm having some problems here. Um, all right, sorry about the miss class. Can you can you just tell me what this is? This is a little um, calculator. It says you know you can use it. It says using a what? Calculator. All right. But you know what, sometimes even using a calculator, you can still make a mistake, not true? Yeah, man. You have to be careful. Yes, sir. Yeah, man. You have to be, especially when you're doing an exam and, you, you know, you, you, hey, let me tell you something. You see, when you're in class and you're doing maths, it's different from when you're in an exam doing maths, not true? Because you're sitting in an exam, you start to think about how much years you spent in high school, how much, in, much in money your mother spent by you, or how many people are depend on you. And we again, if you, uh, what the amount of things that run through your head during the exam? I do think about the time where they run out. I like that too. Why right, some people are thinking, well, what am I going to eat for dinner? <laughs> All right. Just use your calculator. I, I'm, I'm suggesting that you don't, you don't do it at a one shot. I'm suggesting that you just, um, like you work out this first. All right, then you write it down, then you work out the, the square root part, then you subtract it. Can someone tell me what 3.96 times 0 0.25 is? 0 0.9. 0 0.9. 0 0.9. 0 0.9. 0 .99. All right. And what is the square root of that number there? 0 0.16 point what are you giving are you giving rounded off values or these are you you you, you just, no that's, these are the only digits that come up in a, that come in up a okay all right can everybody agree with what our answer yes, sir. all right very good very good all right then you just subtract those two um numbers and what do you get 0 0.83. 0 0.83. All right. No, class. Do I need to round this off? What happens if I round this off? Suppose I write 0 0.8. Rather right than 0 0.83. Or what if what if zero it wasn't 0 0.83? What if it was 0 0.85? I'm so sure. I'm just run top to 0 0.9. Would this be correct? I mean, it is correct if you run it off, but w w would you gain the full three marks? It would be best to work um, in the same amount of significant figures. All right. Why is that so? Why is that so? Um, because, um, for example, the 0 0.99 minus the 0 0.16, both have two significant figures, so it would be just best to keep answering that in that format. All right. Good attempt, but... The, the correct answer is that, look at this instructions. It says determine the what? Determine the exact value. Meaning, whatever comes up on your calculator screen, just write it. Don't run off anything. Now, if you proceed to run it off, you see this three marks here? You're not going to get three. You'll probably get two out of the three. All right? So even though if I run off 0 0.85 and get it correct, they're not going to reward you with the three marks. Because they want you to read instructions and as a matter of fact they put it in what in full caps not true all right all right any any questions about what we just did a while ago no oh, sir. I have a mm -hmm. question. yes okay so i noticed that um you do the multiplication first before the square root. Mm -hmm. So we kind of confused about that. You can like elaborate on that, please. All right. So what 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 you would have you done? Um what would have you what what what, what would be the an alternative? If I didn't multiply, what would you do first? I would um find the square root first mm -hmm. and then do the multiplication. 
and then do the subtraction last. It, it could have been done that way also. All right? You could have been you could you could have actually found um the, the square root first, then multiply. Let me tell you what will be wrong though. To find the square root and then subtract whatever you get for the square root from 0 0.25, then multiply by 3.96. All right? So that would be incorrect. And besides, there is this acronym, um, BODMAS, BOMDAS, PENMAS, all of them. Now, all of those are acronyms for order of operation. You always have to what? Multiply first, if you look at all of them. All right? So that's another reason why you need to multiply first. But you could have actually worked work this out first. It doesn't matter because this is, this is just an operation by itself. All right? All right, so to answer your question, yes, nothing is wrong. But you'd have end up with the same answer, don't you? All right, is that clear enough, miss? Yes, thanks, sir. Yeah, man, no problem. Any more questions? Any more concerns? All right. Okay, so we, we're going to proceed to look at this question here. Let me see if I can erase. All right. Well, it's not really erasing. You know. It's like I'm just using a working on a little shopping list. This is Pamela's um, shopping list. All right, so this is the entire question. So you're given a shopping list. Oh, my robots, my question. It says the table below shows Pamela's shopping bill. Some of the information was not included. Calculate the values of W, X, Y, and Z. All right. I'm going to give you five minutes to do this question, to give an attempt. All right? I'm going to step away momentarily from the mic. So. What is this thing?
All right, guys. All right, anybody want to take on um, W? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, sir. All right, go ahead. Um, for W, it mm -hmm. is 15.60 or 15. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's fifteen dollars and sixty. Money. Right. So it's much. So it's fifteen dollars and sixty. All right. So Jody, tell me how do you um how do you arrive at that an at, at that answer? All right. So um to get the total cost, I multiply the quantity times the mm -hmm. unit price. All right. All right. In your own words, what do you think? What do you think unit price means? Um, unit price is mm -hmm. it would be they have six and a half kilograms, so maybe one kilogram. Okay. Okay. So basically, what you're saying, two dollars forty is the the cost for one kilogram of rice. All right. Yes. Sir. All right, and the use the quantity will be like a multiplicating factor. All right. I mean, let me tell you. Sometimes when we see things um on paper, we just like, what about what is this unit price? But I mean, we have done, we have been doing it every day, you know. I mean, I mean, for those of you who, who live in the rural area and you have a little shop, all right, and you have a little shop, and um, you you go to the shop, right, and you're gonna buy chicken, right? Sunday I come, right? And your mother said, go shop and buy, um, let's say, you know, four pounds, four pounds of chicken. All right? And your mom has to, or dad, has to calculate how much money to give you. Not true. All right? Well, what's the first thing you think your mother, what, what she does to calculate it? What she has to look at first? Apart from having money. She has to look at the cost for what? For one pound. Not true. Right, so the cost for one pound would have been the unit price. Likewise with rice, likewise with flour, etc., etc. All right. All right. So basically, that's what unit price is. All right. Who wants to take on X potatoes? The one that says potatoes. Who wants to take on, take on X? X is $13 and 13.2. All right. Okay, how you arrive at that answer? Um, sir, I divide the total cost by the quantity. Okay, so basically, basically we're trying to find out what's the cost for 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 what for one unit price, isn't true? Yes, yes. So fifty-two point eight divided by four. How much you get? Thirteen point two zero. Thirteen. All right. Is she, is she correct? Are you guys checking? Yes, sir. She's correct. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Please check in. Please check. All right. All right. What about, um, and you notice if you multiply 4 times 13.2, you'll get the what? The 52.8. All right. What about um, the milk? The, sorry, the cartons. What would you do? Sir, for the... um. For the last one, mm -hmm. we don't have what? the quantity, but we have the the price for a single mm -hmm. carton of milk, and we have mm -hmm. the total cost for whatever amount mm -hmm. of cartons of milk is there. Right. So we divide the um. So we say total cost divided by mm -hmm. the unit price, mm -hmm. and, and then we. Which is 
Or you're, you're breaking up a little bit. Can you repeat that? What you got? Six, sir. All right. Six, okay. All right, thank you. Very good. She is absolutely correct. All right. All right, any questions? All right, now you know that when when they add up the 15.6, the 52.8, the 14.10, they get a subtotal. And then now they come in with tax. All right, so tax, this Z represents what? GCT or value added tax. So a percentage of 82.5 will give you what? 9.9. .9. Now, how would you work with the percentage here? What would you do? All right, so let me, let me, let me ask something. The percentage would not normally be, let's say, 10%. Let's, let's say it was 10%. So, well, mm -hmm. well, so go ahead. I was going to answer, sir, but you can go ahead. Okay. No, I'm not answering. I'm just like giving you a little, um, a little review. Let us say you know that the GCT is um or the value of the tax is ten percent. What you'll do is find ten percent of the subtotal. Whatever you get now would have been your what, your tax. And then now you just add the tax with the subtotal to give you your what, your final price. Okay, Jody, go ahead. Um, sir, so mm -hmm. I did to get to find out what is Z, it's 9.90. .9 so I divide 9.90 .9 over 100 mm -hmm. times the total. So 9.9 .9 divided by 82.5. times 100. I'm going to squeeze it right here. All right. And Jody, what do you got? Sir, I have 8.16, sir. All right. Are you sure? No, man. It's, it's not 8.16. Check it again. Clear, clear your calculator and start again. Sir, 9.14. Sorry, sir. No, I think you're doing something wrong. Because 9.9 .9 divided by 82.5 times 100 gives me... Anybody else get something different? Hello, anybody's camera is out for me? 9.9 .9 by 82.5 times 100. I'm getting something different. Sir, I got 12. Yeah, it is 12. So, all right, Jody, I don't know how you, how you got, um, how you arrive at that. It's actually, sir, it's actually I did the wrong total, sir. Oh, okay, you found, oh, you had, you had nine. It was 92.4 or use it. Okay. All right. So the value added tax is what? 12%. All right. And if you find 12% of 82.5, you'll get back the what? The 9.9. .9. As a matter of fact, um, well, this is lower than, than, um, than normal for GCT. No? What is GCT here in Jamaica? It's about, I think it's 15.5. Percent, right? All right. Do you guys have any questions about this? All right. Sir, can you explain how you um you got twelve? All right. So basically, what we do is see, is it a nine point nine? So it's nine point nine divided by the subtotal, which is eighty two point five. Then you times it by a hundred. 
That's what you do to get the answer. Okay, thank you, sir. All right. There's actually another way of getting it, but it's, it's pretty long, you know. But I, I, you know, where you say, you just call, um, you say X percent. You could say X percent of, of 82.5 gives you 9.9. You form a little equation and you find the value of X. That's a long road, but it still works. So what you do is say X percent is the same thing as X over 100 and you, you know, manipulate that and you'll get back the 12. All right. Okay. So let's 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 move on. All right. Okay, I'm gonna give you guys five minutes to try part A and part B. All right, let's give it a try. See how best you can, you know, remember. You know, I, I don't want it to be a, to be a class where you just sit and serve as a workout month and you watch. What so I want it to be active. All right. I want you to try it. All right. Any any takers for A? Anybody wanna? 
Give that a try. All right. I guess I guess I will just try this on my own and you can probably catch on. All right. So so this question is uh what we call an algebraic fraction. All right. So it's, it's just fraction with variables in it. All right. And the same principles about um fraction applies. When you add in two fractions, you find the LCM. So in this case, we would have what? Find the LCM. So we're going to work this just like a regular fraction. It's just that we're going to use some concepts in algebra, like the distributive property. All right? OK. Hold on. Are you guys hearing me? Hold on. Let me check this thing here. Oh, yes. All right. So. What's the LCM of three and four? Three and four. There are 12. 12, 12 sir. Two. Right, right, all right. I'm, I'm gonna try so I can write it over on this side because, you know, Twelve. I know, I know you, I know you guys enjoy my artistic writing. Whoops. Right, so the LCM is what? It's 12. LCM. So three, how many groups of three can you get out of 12? It will be four. four. All right, now listen carefully. Listen carefully. Some students, what they do, you know, they, 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 like, they just do this. Catch it right there, so. Four into 12 goes three, and then catch it right there, so just like how we did it in, um, for regular numbers. But it's because... If you look at the numerator, it's more than one terms. So just to play it safe, this is what I'm going to do. 3 into 12 goes 4. So I'm going to say 4 multiplied by x minus 2. I'm going to put it right there because I don't want to make any mistakes. All right? And 4 into 12 goes 3. So it's going to be 3. 3 times what? x plus 1. And let me tell you something, if this number here was a negative, you guys would appreciate, um, you know, this way of writing it. All right, then now the next step is that we're going to use a distributive law. What is a distributive law? The distributive law is like, for example, if you have A, it, it's just like removing brackets. All right, I have A, X plus Y plus, plus Z plus infinity and go on beyond. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to distribute A to X, A to Y, A to Z, A, it goes, it goes infinitely. All right? So A, A can be done. It's a distribute. All right? So, all right. So four times X is what? Four X, sir. Four X. Four twos? Eight. Eight. Three times X? Three X. Three X. Three ones? Three. Three. All over what? Twelve. All right. And what are you following so far? Sir, me did, um, what me do is, me, um, four X and then me time take away by two. And then plus 3x plus 1. I never remember some for that. Okay. All right. All right. So then, no, what I'm going to do in here now, I'm going to group like terms. So I'm going to group x with x and number with number. So I'm going to put it over here. So we have 4x plus. 3x minus 8 
plus 3. All right? Now, what I just wrote a while ago is not cast in stone or cement or whatever you want to call it. You could have actually grouped 3 plus 4x. Right? You could have said 3 minus 8. It doesn't really matter. Over 12. All right? So then we notice these are what? Like terms. All right? So, yeah, so 4x plus 3x is what? Is 7x. What is negative 3 plus 8? Sorry, what is negative 8 plus 3? Negative 5. Five. Negative, negative 5. All right. Um, all over all over 12. And that's your answer. All right. Any questions? Yes, sir. Why didn't mm -hmm. you say 4x minus 3x, sir? All right. Good question. I even forgot to mention that. Good, good point. No, what happened is that it's because I'm grouping this 3x, whatever sign is in front of the 3x, I'm so happy that you remind me because I forgot that point. Whatever sign is in front of the term that you're moving moves with it. So 3x, what sign is in front of 3x? A plus. So it moves with it. So if I shuffle 8, I'm, what I'm going to take with it? Negative 8. If you notice in this line here, between this line and that line, all the signs are the what? Are still the same. It's still negative 8, negative 8. It's still plus 3, it's still plus 3. So you try to maintain the signs um, of, the, of the term when you shuffle them around. All right. Okay, sir. That's very All right. And, right. And and some persons, you know, you know why some persons, um, some persons just thinks about why, you know. All right. Then 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 you'll probably learn that when you, when you take things over an equal sign, the sign change. All right. But there's no equal sign, right here, so for it to change. And some persons move the term and left the sign. All right? All right, so then no. Oh, I just realized I actually finished the question. I have a quick question for you. Suppose it was 7x, you see? 7x subtract 5 over, let's say, 14. Suppose it was 14. Could I say 7 to 7 goes 1, 7 to 14 goes 2? Could I have done that? No, no. sir. No, you can't do that. All right? You can't cancel when you have two terms separated with a what? A plus or a minus. So if you have two terms, right, and it's separated by a plus or a minus, you can't cancel like that. But suppose it was a multiplication. Suppose it was, suppose it was 7x. Suppose it was 7x. Times, say, 3. Over 40. All right, so then you can cancel because this sign is a what? A multiplication. But you can't do that when it's separated with either a plus or a minus. All right, are we good? Any questions? Are you clear? Clear, yes, sir. All right. It's no, I must, I must uh, mention that. We have, we have algebraic fractions, and we have also have algebraic equations. So, for example, sometimes they put they put they put equal one number. All right. So the working out for algebraic equations is 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 slightly different. All right. All right. Let me see how best I can. Um... Anybody attempted part B? Yes, sir. All right. Yes, sir. All right. All right. So, 
I hear two ladies. I hear two ladies um spoke a while ago. Um I'll I'll ask I'll ask the most beautiful one the, the most beautiful one to speak first. <laughs> yes, sir. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. You but you but you but you but they are school it, and for some strange reason, them said the, the ugliest one, something like I can't remember ago, ugliest one um the, the last person in the class, uh, something I can't remember, you know I've been out of the classroom so many so for so long I can't remember classroom jokes, but you know, all right, all right, okay, yes, Jordan, um, I wouldn't mind if you just speak first first part and the other young lady that try to finish it up. All right, so just okay, tell me, no yeah, tell, tell me how you, how you, what you do to get the answer. All right, so the A asterisk B mm -hmm. a, um, would mean that anywhere you see A or B, you would represent it with the number that they asked you to calculate. Okay. So mm -hmm. This, yes, it says A plus B in brackets and square two. So I have three plus four brackets and square two minus two times A, um, which is three, times B, which is four. All right. Very good. Thank you. Now, class, we notice. Now, let me just tell you about a certain misconception. We know if you do IT, that this symbol in IT means what? Multiplication. And even on some calculators, when you see the multiplication sign, what pops up is the asterisk sign. Now, that is true. In IT and certain levels of math, asterisk actually means multiplication. But um, in this case here, we're not looking at, uh, it doesn't mean that. All right? What they're saying, you see? This symbol here represents all of this operation. That's what it's saying. All right? So if you multiply A times B, it's equal to all of this. It's like a little formula. All right? Let us say this is you want to make rice and peas. Or you want to cook rice and peas. A are the rice, B are the peas. And you do some little maths and, you know, I say you get rice and peas or something like that. All right? And basically, what, whatever A is, it's going to be 3. Whatever B is, that's going to be 4. And you just replace the letters with numbers. Come like substitution. All right. Miss, get the other young lady who had said that she, she done it. You want, you want to finish, finish up the question? Yes, sir. So All right. first, mm -hmm. first you would work what's in the bracket, sir. So 4 mm -hmm. plus 3 plus 7. Mm -hmm. Square the 7 now. And you get mm -hmm. um, 49. All right. Then you yeah, um you work what's inside that bracket that you have there now. So it would be two three six mm -hmm. six four is twenty four. So it would be um. So the the next um step oh, would hold be. On, hold on. Sorry, to, um, sorry. I, I made a mistake. Sorry. Um, the six six times four, so that's twenty four. Um, uh, give me a second there. All right, so so this is going to be seven square, which is what forty nine, right? And twenty four from forty nine is twenty five. Twenty five. All right. Class, any 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 questions? Any comments? All right. Okay, guys. Um, it's a quarter to six, and I'm going to take my, my leave. Thank you for joining us. I hope you learned something, and I hope whatever you learn will help you um, be successful in your exam from June the 23rd.
All right? All right. I'm sorry. Yeah, man. Mr. Green? All right. I'm not hearing Mr. Green. Probably step out. All right. So we're going to do, do the register. All right. So I'm not seeing Mr. Oh, he's, he, he probably stepped out. So I'll see you guys next week, same time. All right. So take it easy. All right. Okay, bye -bye. sir. Yeah.